turn the music up, not me. Do I sound that again? <laughs> I like that. You like that? I'm going to leave it in. Really? <laughs> yeah. All right. These are what make people love us because we're real. <laughs> it's no professional. Yeah, we're not a caricature. <laughs> Is that better? Can you hear yourself now? I can hear myself. Oh, speaking it's even to the better. Mic, I can't so. hear you very well. You can't hear me now. It's perfect. Go on. <laughs> All right. Welcome. Thank you. To, to Marty Fields and Ken Murdoch's podcast. That's true. The Sons of Sunbury. Episode nine, in which we explore God, the music. Beat goes on. No <laughs> and escape. Life. No escape. No escape. No escape. <laughs> of, of a band or an artist. Yes. And then later on, we look at. If they're not on to what we're doing now, then they've had a head injury like the Cinderella Man. What if someone's joined us? They can go back. That's true. And if they don't want to, fuck them. <laughs> now I have to beep you out. No, you don't. i got a beeper. Really? Oh, yeah. That's nice. Because it's explicit. What movie are we doing? Uh, the, the Perfect Storm. Okay. Uh, uh, it's George, better be perfect. <laughs> George Clooney. Okay. All right. All right, now. The Who. I love The Who. Do you want to? Have you, have you done anything recently that we need to know before we start? Uh, no. Oh, I went to Brisbane. That was fun. Yes. Yeah. Well, not so much fun because we went to see a friend who's not very well with cancer. But but it was a nice thing. Nice thing to go to Brisbane. It's hot there. I was hoping you'd tell a joke, but all right. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a bit down. No, that's all I got. I, I apologise. <laughs> but it was very hot. Well, I watched a movie with my wife. Tell me if you can tell me the title of this movie. Um, I, they, I, hang on. They're, 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 they find out that their son is gay. Yes. They take the whole family to Paris, but they leave him at home. What's it called? Homo Alone. Yeah! I don't think you can say that anymore. Oh. Well, I, well, see, I thought about that, but you can. Why can't you? It's a short... Everyone's shortening things. So yes. why can't you shorten homosexual? Well, you can. There's talking about those midgets that you were talking dwarf. Was there, was... I didn't have any gay dwarfs, but I don't. No gay nothing dwarfs. Nothing wrong with being gay, for no. God's sake. You know. No. It's, well, being alone. You know that entire plot of that movie could have been solved with a mobile phone. That's true. Yeah. Mum, I'm on. home. What's wrong with you? Text why, her. Why did it take so long? I, I, I actually wonder about that. Why it took so long for the police to go around and say, listen, your parents have left you, so come and... You know, to the station. Hmm. Yeah, but that would re- destroy the movie. Yeah. But, uh, I, yeah, I love that movie. Home that Alone. was the first draft. <laughs> it was called Home for Al- Home Alone, But Not Very Long <laughs> was the original title. Yeah. And the, the executive said, look, we love it, yeah. but 10 minutes is a bit but short for a movie. <laughs> we like it, but we don't love it, they said. <laughs> they, always get the, they always get the British guy in to tell them the bad news. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> yes. We like it. But we don't love it. <laughs> All right. So the Who. Who? Now, here's a band, my favourite rock band in the world. I love the Who. Hang on. I thought ACDC were favourite. Oh, no, no. They're, you they're said down, they were. They're down the A few weeks ago. Oh, well, I see what I have to do. <laughs> to keep the podcast going. Roger Daltrey. Oh, what a singer. Keith Moon. Incredible drummer. Dead now, of course. Not that there's anything wrong with that. 20. <laughs> what people choose to do in their own spare time is entirely their own. Not that there's anything wrong. You know what he died but... of? What? Drugs. He did. He had too many drugs. <laughs> he did. They don't say that to people in hospital, though, when they're pumping him full of drugs and they still die. They don't say that. He died. What happened? Too many drugs. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, too much chemo. They don't, they don't no. never say that. Yeah, and I believe that's true. Yeah. Now, Keith Moon died, actually. With a plastic spoon in his mouth? That would be great, wouldn't it? That would have been great. If that how he died, whoa, poetic. Plastic spoon up his nose, more than likely. Really? He, he uh... Not up his ass. No, no, no. That was the other one. Stephen Nicks. He, he uh, went to the... How do you know it was cocaine? I thought it was heroin with him. No, he didn't die of heroin. He died of sleeping tablets. Oh, how boring. Yeah. Well, he'd taken everything. He, he was strong as a, an ox. You know oxes are surprisingly not strong. Is that right? Yeah. And do you know that the bass player of The Who, his nickname is The Ox. Interesting. Yeah. You know, my Chinese um, sign is the ox. Oh. And I know what that sign is outside your door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and you know how they describe, like, what the characteristic is? Like, you're the goat or the rat or the ferret or whatever it is in the Chinese shit, right? I'm the ox. I am so not like the ox. 
everything they say that ox is, I'm not ox. I'm anti-ox. In fact, I'm antioxidant. Ah! Is what I am. And I'm not. I didn't. That's not. I'm not making a joke. I'm absolutely everything. And yet, with the the Virgo Sagittarius shit, I'm Sagittarian, and I'm absolutely perfect Sagittarian. I, everything they say the Sagittarius should be. That's what I am. Is it? Yeah. You believe that? Well, you? I'm just telling you. They, you know, when they describe, what are you? What? I'm Virgo. Virgo. <laughs> Virgo. <laughs> not anymore. I'm from the Virgin Islands. Yeah, Virgo. Okay, well, that's a nice thing. Yeah. Whatever Virgos are supposed to be, are you that? I, I don't know what they are. Well, you can look it up. What is a Virgo? And they tell you, you know, Virgos are, you know, like they're good, at, good with figures and they're sensitive and blah, blah, blah. Sagittarians are like, Sagittarians historically are comedians who live in South Melbourne and drive an Audi. It's extraordinary. <laughs> it's extraordinary. Hang on, I'm looking it up. What are Virgos? <laughs> like in bed. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Jeez, that's mm. – they're super sociable. How they? I'll, I'll tell you and you tell me if this is true about me. Mm. Super sociable. No, you hate people. <laughs> I do. Love being with people. Well, that answers that. Yeah. Also fiercely independent. Mm, to a degree. And like to do things on their own. You do like to do things on your own. I do. That's true. They need an equal balance of time with you and time alone. Yeah, I'll buy that. All right. Needy friends and mates won't last long with a Virgo. Am I needy? No. I'm not a needy, no, am I? No, you're not. Thank you. You've got everything. What could you need? What do you want? That's right. You want it? I got it. You it, look up Sagittarian. Yeah. I'm, right. I'm everything. I'm exactly what they say. All right. Outgoing, say the wrong thing before they're supposed to say something, completely offend everybody all the time, don't mean to, loving, loyal. All right. What is the personality of a Sagittarian? Yes. Multiple sign means it's associated with adaptability and flexibility. That's me. Look that at me. I can touch my toe with my nose. <laughs> That's true. I'm doing it now. <laughs> oh, the other night when you came in in your tuxedo. Yes. Long tails, sorry, yes. and a top hat. Going to the Monopoly party. Yes. I'm, I want to query on your, your clothes today. Go ahead. Why are you wearing a wetsuit? Well, global warming. You never know when suddenly my suburb is going to be underwater. So I'm getting ahead of the game. I like the way you think. Yeah. Flippers too. Absolutely. Nice. You don't know. You have to walk backwards in flippers. It is easier to walk backwards in flippers. That's a fact. And that's why, you know, when I wore my, um, when I wore my flippers last time, I was scuba diving, right? And do you know why scuba divers fall backwards off the boat? Because no. they fell forward, they'd still be in the boat. <laughs> Very true. That's just physics. All right, our band today, the Who. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dragging him back. I know, yes. But sometimes Eight we... minutes in, haven't said shit about the Who. All right. All right. Uh, now, <clears throat> Keith Moon died of. Um, he went to Sleeping the buddy. Sleeping tablets. N- yeah. Up he, the ass. Yeah. No. Not up he, the ass. No. He went to the Buddy Holly. Um, Buddy's dead. Launch. Yeah, he's dead. Died in a plane crash. <laughs> That's right. That's, That's right. He swapped his tickets with um, John Denver. Yeah. Forgot to fill up my sass now. Just before he hit his peak. Rocky Mountain, just a little bit too high. Yeah. Uh, um, All of them. Yes. Uh, why? I've got to stop myself saying um, but it's really hard in this It's hard not to say um. We seem to go off and come back. I didn't say um. No, you don't because you've been trained formally. I was trammed. You've been on the big shows. <laughs> it's even better than trained. I was trammed. <laughs> my dad was the... Uh, Highest paid depot master of the tramways in Victoria. Is that right? What yeah. depot was he in? Essendon. Oh, that's some depot. Yeah. He saw the Beatles drive past. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Now, what happened was Keith Moon went to this party run uh, had by Paul McCartney. My uncle was a tram driver. Yes. He quit. He wanted to swerve. <laughs> they said, I'm sorry, that's not allowed. He said, but I want to swerve. They said, there's no job for you here. And he moved on. <laughs> Try if you want. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he goes to his buddy Holly launch, uh-huh. um, goes home, takes some sleeping tablets. Who? Keith Moon. What What do you mean a buddy Holly launch? Well, that's uh, – yes, I was hoping you'd go over that, but all right. Um, Paul McCartney acquired the rights to Buddy Holly's publishing. Do you know who got the lefts? Who? Michael Jackson. <laughs> that's right. Michael Jackson got the lefts. Paul McCartney got the rights. Yes, the right. bit in the middle, nobody owns nope. yet. Yes. That's still up for grabs. <laughs> Maybe the Koreans. Make a bid. The Koreans. Yeah. Oh, they'll get it. 
They make it sushi. Hey, what about that Masquerade. <laughs> That's Japanese. <laughs> yes. There's a backstory to this. We're not going into it. What about in my car? Yes. You asked me what that little si- the little thing was in my car, which is a, a phone holder. Yes. You're gesticulating yeah. in a audio world. Yeah, yes. Sorry. Yes. And it said on it, <laughs> this is one. This <laughs> is one. Yes. <laughs> Yes. And we thought that was the best thing in the world. Yes. Well, you did. I wasn't particularly enamored with it, but this is one. In the back seat, he's got one that says, this is two. And we don't know what that meant either. No, but when you write into them and you say, I want to buy a, a, a pickup from my base, they mm. send you that because it says, this is one. This is one. And we did this for, what, an hour, half an hour? Jeez, we laughed. 35 seconds, yeah. maybe, but anyway. All right. all right. So, the who? So, Keith Moon. Empty world you live in. He's been to the. Launch, he yes. takes yes. some sleeping tablets because yes. he's, he's uh, coked up. Does he come out at night? Who? Keith Moon. <laughs> yes, he does. Yeah, And believe me, that night it was a full moon. Big drinker. Yeah. So he goes to bed. <laughs> a he has moon. a steak. Yes. I don't know how relevant that is, but he has a steak. In what? Before he goes to bed. No, not oh, a steak in. Not a steak in. Uh, you know vampires? Yeah. They teach their children... Not to run with a stake in their hand. <laughs> That's true. All right. You can look that up. That's true. And another thing about vampires, mm-hmm. they can't see themselves in a reflection. Yeah. Why is the hair always so fabulous? Ah, see? Uh-huh. You think, this is why you can't sleep. No. You're thinking of these things, aren't you? Yeah. So, so many questions. So he has a stake. Keep moving. What kind of steak? Uh, I'm guessing T-Bone. Was it Steak Diane? I don't know who she was. You don't see a lot of that anymore, they don't. Steak Diane. Steak Diane. Yeah, some carpet bag. You could have had that with your Advocat and Lemonade. Yes, I would have. And my um, prawn cocktail. Oh, yeah. Prawn cocktail. In the, um, like, the long glass. Yes. Yeah, that's In right. In the champagne glass. Yes, that's right. At the restaurant at the Goulburn Hopper Inn. <laughs> that's right. The motel. When you stop, you couldn't quite make it to Sydney. You stopped at Goulburn. That's and right. you had dinner in the restaurant. Yeah. Or the Coles Cafeteria. They used to send prawn cocktails. The guy next to us was the chef of the Coles Cafeteria. He's dead now. Thanks for bringing that up. Why don't you give me a paper cut and pour lemon juice in it? Let's get on with it. <laughs> well, um, so he has his steak, goes to sleep. Sleeping tablets, put yeah. him to sleep. Wakes up in the middle of the night. Choking on the steak? No. Ooh. Forgets he's had the tablets because he's... And salt. takes more tablets. And takes more tablets. That's how he died. That's interesting. At 27. A lot of people have died at 27. Who? Jimi Hendrix. At the age of 37. 27. Oh, that's the Battle of Lucy Jordan. Yeah. No. Uh, Jimi, Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix, 27. You know when Jimi Hendrix died, mm. the priest said, no, Stevie Ray Vaughan. When Stevie Ray Vaughan died, the priest said, well, I guess God needed an, a, a new lead guitarist. Oh, that's very nice. That's isn't what the priest it? said. But you can only apply that to showbiz because if like Frank DeVulio died, well, I guess, I guess God needed another night manager at Pizza Hut in Heidelberg. <laughs> what did he say when Michael Jackson died? <laughs> well, I guess God needed his drugs back. You know, Michael Jackson died of propofol overdose. Propofol is the drug they give you when they have surgery. Yes. Michael Jackson was using it as a sleeping tablet. Yes. Right? This is actually true, what he was using it. That's a bit like shaving your head because you're too lazy to have chemo. <laughs> That's a nice knowledge. Yeah. You like that? All right, so Keith Moon's dead. Who else is left? Roger Daltrey? Roger Daltrey's alive. Pete Townsend. We haven't even spoken about Pete Townsend. I love him. He's my my god. I love Your god. Oh, my guitar. Our lady of the Pete Townsend. (laughs) That's right. You go to that Sunday. I pray to him. Yeah. Um, What's his best song? uh, Actually, I I got asked this the other day. I, I like a song called Dr. Jimmy and Mr. Jim. Which is off the Quadrophenia album. He should have written him and let other people name. That's a bad name. Jim. Well, Jim's all right, but Dr. Jimmy and Mr. Jim or whatever you said. Well, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is the reference. Okay. And there's a line in it which I think is the greatest rock line ever written. (laughs) Big call, Ken. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of people won't like it because these days everything's... You say she's a virgin. Well, I'm going to be the first in. Her boyfriend's going to kill me. Oh, fucking will he. I love that. I think that sums up rock and roll. This is why they've never asked you to be Pope. (laughs) 
Not once. Not even on a quiet day <laughs> have the Vatican rung you and said, Ken, we're looking for a Pope. Pope Kenneth Frank. And you would have said, before you give me the gig, let me tell you my favourite rock song, rock line of all. And they would have said, you know what? We've just found another guy. <laughs> Pope <laughs> McGee. Yeah. Pope. <laughs> Pope he, Batso. He got the gig. <laughs> Pope <laughs> McGee the first. So, do you- Tours. What's your favourite? I admire the Pope touring. You, I admire anyone who can tour without an album. <laughs> i got to tell you what's weird about the Catholic Church. I know we did kind of just divert a bit. Catholic Church is against abortion mm. and homosexuality. Mm. Who has less abortions than homosexuals? <laughs> That's right. Doesn't exactly. make sense. No. Now, what about your who? The favourite album? Put those words in the right order, will you? Um... Awesome. I only ever got their greatest hits. Is. Oh, what well, favourite song? <sighs> Who Are You? That's a very good song. Thanks, Ken. Do you know they swear on that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it takes exactly one lap around the block at my house to play Who Are You? Ah. Which is why I like it. Well, not why I like is it. Is that why you like it? No, no, I like it. I like the musicality of it. Mm. And I like the way when it's nearly over, it's not over. It starts yes. again. Who are you? Yeah. It keeps going. And um, I enjoy Pinball Wizard. Mm. I like I'm a Boy. Hey, that's a great song. Um, Won't Get Fooled Again is probably the greatest oh, rock anthem. I agree. Mm. Actually, you know what? I love that. Yeah. They're a great band. Oh, incredible. Live, unbelievable. I never saw them live. I was dead when I saw them. Going to see him People are like, what's wrong with this guy? Oh, he's got a stab wound. Get some vodka, they said. <laughs> you know who plays drums for The Who now? Not that's okay. I saw that look. You, you, he did for a while. You give me the look like he auditioned. <laughs> he auditioned, like and look. you know what? They had a crossover of dates. He couldn't do it because he was doing the Joker. It it it, it crossed the There's dates. So many things he could have been doing. He was the busiest dude. His agent. Oh my God! Pulling their hair out. They were. His only, of course, Tony Katz management looked after him. <laughs> No, a very frustrated organisation. No, the answer is Zach Starkey, Ringo Starr's son. Not Bob Starkey. <laughs> no, Bob Starkey doesn't play drums. No. no. <laughs> I'm not touching it. No, but what? No, oh. Zach Starkey was Bob Starkey's son, wasn't he? Oh, no, no, no. Zach Starkey is Ringo Starr's son. Because you remember Ringo... Where'd the KY come from? <laughs> the medicine drawer? That's what Molly said. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. No. You know, speaking of KY, they were talking about being raped in prison, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it were we? to me. No, they were talking about it on the news the other night. Huh. That the number one reason pre people don't want to go to jail yes. is because of prison rape. <laughs> Fair enough. This is actually true. <laughs> the reason people won't rob a bank is that they don't want to get banged in jail, yeah. right? And I couldn't help thinking that Talks <laughs> hilarious. I couldn't help thinking um, that you've got the same equipment as the dude trying to rape you, so you could try and rape them. Rape the raper. Exactly. So they've got their pants down and running after you, <laughs> and you've got your pants down running up, and you're like running around in a circle. <laughs> Nobody like, raping anyone. Everyone's trying to rape everyone because, you know, you've both got your pants down, you're <laughs> running around in circles, and the, the closer to the rear of the other dude, the closer you are. And... The guy raping you would eventually get so frustrated he'd be going, "Well, I'm not going to even rape you at all. You just you you complete you make a mockery of the rape <laughs> and taking the fun out of it. Yes, and it would spread through the whole prison. Don't rape this guy because it becomes a fiasco. And 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 you'd be free of the rapeness. <laughs> that's how I. That's my strategy. If I have to go <laughs> in jail for whatever it might be that I would do, who knows? I might have already done it and haven't found me yet. Tax fraud. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to rape the raper yeah. and people are go, oh, no. If you Don't, go fast enough, you could rape yourself. You, yeah, it's actually true. It's true. Don't rape him because it just becomes a debacle <laughs> and you lose all your confidence. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's Thank very you. good advice. Because, you know, some of us are we're good looking guys. <laughs> I think you'd be safe. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I'm just saying. You went into jail. I don't think... I no, don't think the I'm number okay. one thing on people's lips would be going, hmm, <laughs> this is fresh meat. I don't think they'd say that. You know that movie, um, The Shawshank Redemption? Yes, I do. Now, he gets raped 
Yes. And if you pay attention to what he's saying, he virtually says he gets raped every day for the whole time he's there. He, in the end, he's just saying, well, he's got his hand up against the wall. Get it over. How can he walk? It doesn't affect your walking. It affects your pooing <laughs> to a great degree and I'm told yes. affects your taste in books. books. You, you start to, you, your, your, your literature starts to change. Like you go from, you know, like the young and the restless and, you know, Taylor Two Cities to how not to be raped. This is what you start ordering from Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Your you, book. You're downloading Run in a circle. It. Yes. Quick. Run in a circle. The key to not be raped <laughs> and other children's stories. <laughs> By the way, if you'd like to buy Marty Fields' latest book, it's available on where? At all good bookstores. Well, some bad ones too. <laughs> it's yes. Called, it's called... It's called Actual Funny Politically Correct Jokes by Marty Fields and I will open up any page and read you a joke. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> It's amazing that eggs don't taste like chickens. <laughs> it's true. Oh. What Spice Girl can hold the most petrol? Jerry can. Say, okay, not, not a toe tapper. <laughs> I liked it. You like that? I liked it when I read it out of the Christmas. My, my favourite is actually, I think, the first joke in the book, which uh -huh. is, I imagine pillow fights went for a lot less time in the Stone Age. <laughs> no, it's your first joke in this book is, also, my mate in the industry, away from comedy, Ken Murdoch. Oh, Isn't you got a mention nice? in the book. That's lovely. And I've been mentioned in all your books just about. Yeah, I think. Yeah, that's why I buy them. Yeah. I don't keep the rest of the book, just to buy them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, back to the who. We've, We've got a holiday home because 20, of Ken 22. buying my books. We're in 22 minutes and we have uh, not even got on to John Entwistle, one of the greatest bass players ever. Better oh, than yeah. Sting? Oh, yeah, much better than Sting. Better than Sting. Yeah, he is. He's on par with Paul McCartney. He was voted number two to Paul McCartney. Um, In the World Bass Player Awards. Yeah, which, which you've just been on. Yeah, I saw them. I <laughs> nearly hosted them. <laughs> if you listen to um, yeah. Won't Get Fooled Again. <laughs> right. Won't Get Fooled Again? That's what it's called. You said I won't get through it again. <laughs> no. Listen get... back, you did. No. Won't Get Fooled Again, right? Still sad. Um, yes. I, don't, I don't know what the chords are. What D, C, G, let's say, let's say. D, 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 G. No, the chorus. Never had a listen, though. <laughs> Guitar's attitude from no. me. All right. Anyhow, the point is. No, it's C. G, C. It's C to G. Okay. B, C, C. You keep going, but you're not going between them fast enough. C, C, G, D, C, C, G, D, C, C, C. That's right, that's right. Now, now a bass player would normally do this. That G, G, C, C. Not your average bass player. <laughs> you know the guy who plays for Melbourne Aces, the third bass player? <laughs> not Fatty McGee, please. Please stop getting the name wrong. Fats over here. Thank you. No, he just, he's short sub. <laughs> Well, end whistle goes do 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 right? Really? You know why? Why? You're getting paid by the note. <laughs> it's very unusual for that line to be in that song, but without that line, it is not such an extraordinary song. I'm not sure we really sold it that well then, anyway. There you go. Ah. Now, so the who? This is how they met. Who? Yeah. So they met Roger Daltrey. Yeah. Uh. He was cleaning the um, the sump drain at Sierra's retreat. He was a labourer. He's a very muscly man because of his labouring early days. Right? Roger Daltrey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What He's kind of a tough labor? guy? What kind of uh, you know building? So you know lifting rocks. What are they building? Really? Bricks. Was yeah. he a bricklayer? I don't think he was a bricklayer per se. I did that. Yes. One day. Yes. Worst morning of my life. I was a bricklayer. Yes. And they said, first day, huh? And I said, yep. And they said, how can you tell? They said, the pros start at the bottom. <laughs> Big mistake. Yes. Uh, John, John Entwistle. John Entwistle. An accountant. John Entwistle was an, uh, a bookkeeper accountant. So is your son. Hey? So is your son. 
Oh, he is, yeah, just uh, distinctions. Uh, top five. In? Sunbury. Uh, well, no, I'm guessing, uh, I'm guessing Victoria. I don't think it would be Australia, although he's very... You don't finish third in Australia in the Heart Challenge out of, like, thousands and thousands of people. The Heart Challenge did the... You got three months to walk, see how much heartness you can do, whatever it is that measuring. I finished 13th out of everybody. When? Uh, it just got announced like a couple of weeks ago. Really? Truly, really. I thought you were going to say you've got the best heart. No, I'm not making it up. It's true. Am it's I true. boring you? No, keep going. I'm going to show you, but keep talking. Oh, you're looking at your phone. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to show you, I but see. keep going. All right. So, anyway. Oh, Holy me. Moses. Shall we go to a break? You're listening to Sons of Sunbury. Ah, look what time it is. And now it's time for Maury's Joke of the Week. Okay, we're back with what is becoming a very favourite segment on our show. Okay. This is uh, Maury's Joke of the Week featuring Marty telling a joke by his dad in his dad's voice. Here we go. Me and me mad by... Blade Bone Brady, we see. We're coming down from Sydney for the Melbourne Cup. We haven't got home yet. We were coming down the highway and we've got eight bottles of jump about in the back seat, three bottles of vanilla essence, and we're not doing too good. So we've pulled into an all night cafe, you see, in Gundagai. And we've turned up to this all night cafe, starving hungry at two o'clock in the morning. And we've turned up into the cafe and we've sat down and the bloke's gone, Can I help you, mate? And he said, Yeah. Uh, we fancy some eggs. You got some eggs on toast or something? And the bloke's gone, no worries. And he's turned out to the kitchen and the chef said, I've got one egg in the joint, mate. And he said, well, listen, whack some gorgonzola into the eggs, mix it up. They're a bit pissed. They won't know the difference. So the chef's banged an egg and a handful of gorgonzola onto a plate and he's whacked it up to me, mate, Blade Bone Brady, you see. And Blade Bone's got halfway through it, pushed it across, you see. And he's turned to the bloke behind the counter. He said, hey, get here. Get here. Get here. Mate, where do you get your eggs? The bloke said, i got in house at the back. He said, you got any roosters? He said, no, as a matter of fact, I don't. He said, well, if I was you, I'd get a couple, mate. He said, why is that? He said, I think a skunk's been knocking off your chickens. <laughs> All right, Marty's just showing me his uh, phone from the house. Heart Foundation, you've made it to the finish line. You finished 13th out of 15,594. Huh? Good on you, Marty. What about that? Yeah. Oh, and now he's knocking over the fruit platter. Are you good? No. Oh, that's congratulations. That's fantastic. Um, now, back to the who. All right. So We finished with them. No, well, we've got to quickly say how they meet. Oh. So the three of them, let's just say the three of them, John Entwistle, uh, Roger Daltrey, Pete Townsend, they know each other. They're playing with another drummer. <laughs> That's so. Okay. Anyway, so this guy walks up to him, completely covered in ginger. He's got a ginger shirt, ginger jacket, sprayed his hair ginger. He, he's a little ginger man. So he says, I could do better than that idiot drummer you got. And they go... Keith Moon. <laughs> yeah. Keith the one Moon. that's not dead yet? Yeah, he's not dead then. He's not even in the who. They're called the high numbers then. So he goes, uh, they go, oh, do you want to have a, have a go? He gets up. He, they said he played like he does now, main, or like he did then, a maniac, crazy. Smash the guy's drum kit. And that's when they said, you're the drummer for us. And it was? Keith Moon. Oh. Oh, I thought he was replacing Keith Moon. No. Keith Moon smashed the other guy's drum kit in one song. and they That'll said, put that other guy out of business. <laughs> they said, well, he hasn't got a drum kit, so, no. so you're in. I've got one in the car, he said. <laughs> I'll bring it in. And, and Entwistle used to play like a, a lead guitarist, wanted to be a lead guitarist. See that? That's bass playing I with four fingers. I saw what you did. And so Pete Townsend had no other choice but to play chords and is incredible rhythm guitarist. R- really good lead guitar player too, but known now for his... Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh. And because they were so loud, famously, John Entwistle, because he was so deaf, had to wear hearing aids on stage. Hmm. And he also died snorting cocaine off a hooker 
<laughs> at Las Vegas. <laughs> All right, cool. What's our movie? Uh, the Perfect Storm. Ooh. Oh, now, now, you know about The Perfect Storm. You, you, you haven't seen it, but you told me you knew of it. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I lasted um, 30 minutes. So you've seen the first part of it, which yeah. not much happens, and I can understand. Do you know why? Why? Because we, we had to sit near the front. We saw it at, at um, the movies in Brighton. Yes. And we sat in the front. Now, I, I promise you, I'm not making this up, I got seasick. Really? I had to leave. Wow. It wasn't one of those uh, theatres where they make the chairs move and stuff, is not it? Not around. <laughs> Seeing Earthquake at the East End 1. No. <laughs> no, I got seasick. Really? By watching it? Yeah. And the first half an hour, there, there, are some, there is some boat action. Believe me, I know. But not, not anywhere where it goes. Well, I didn't get to that. No. Well, then you're in luck. I'm here to tell you about it. All right. George now, Clooney. George Clooney. Um, John C. Riley. That's who I'm talking about. John C. Riley. That's the guy I'm talking about. Yeah. He played Amos in Chicago. But also, but, wasn't there one of the Backstreet Boys in it as well? Mark Wahlberg. That's the guy. Which was Marky Mark, wasn't he? Yeah. And Diane Lane, who was from... Uh, from um, just off Burke Street. Uh, <laughs> no, but I meant... Um, I meant she's from that movie, Rumblefish. <laughs> That's quite some film. Yeah. Yes, go on. All right. Now, uh, this, um, the way it starts mm-hmm. is George Clooney. Well, actually, we should go to Mark, Mark Wahlberg first. Mark, Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg <laughs> is, yeah. uh, it should, should have changed his name for a start. Well. All right. All right. So the, 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 fishing, the fishing town yes. is not going well. Hmm. The fisheries, uh, there's no fish in the ocean. There's fish... In some parts of the ocean. But where Mark Wahlberg and George Clooney are going, no good. They're not doing very well. So they had to go out to the Grand Rapids. Do they? That's where they go. Is it? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Oh. Well, you've jumped quite a bit ahead, haven't you? I've cut through the shit. <laughs> because George Clooney doesn't want to go out there. No one wants to go out there because very da- it was very dangerous. Well, it's John C. Riley has just had a, uh, a little boy. Yeah. He doesn't want, not, not in a sexual way, he's had a baby. He, he doesn't want, Yes. <laughs> he doesn't want to leave his family. No. But George Clooney said, look, we'll do this one. Just this one. Yeah, and we'll be all right. And if you die. <laughs> Didn't mention that. No. We'll do this one. Uh. Everything's going to be fine. Really? I'm a great captain. He's a good captain, let's face it. How hard can it be? Steer the boat. Yeah. Catch the fish, come back. Wear the hat. Yeah, that's right. So so Mark Wahlberg also broke. Start singing? No, I oh, thank God he didn't sing. He's a good singer. Is he? Good actor too. Mm, not sure about either of those. But anyhow, he's, Diane Lane is his girlfriend. <laughs> yes. And she said, don't go. Who? Diane Lane. She goes, to who? To Mark Wahlberg. I've got a funny feeling. I've got a funny feeling about the whole thing. Could she feel it in her waters? She does, exactly. And she felt it in the ocean. So, yeah. she's, so she says, don't go. But and they, he says... I'm going. And do you know why he goes? Do you? Yeah, I do. Why? Because in the script, it says he goes. <laughs> That's right. All right. And if you don't <laughs> go, you know what you get? Nothing. Out. You get, yeah. You're out. We'll you get see recast. You later. We'll recast. Yeah. We'll okay. get the second guy we chose for your role. <laughs> Who would that have been? Fatso McGee. Oh. He was chosen and couldn't do it because at that time he was doing the headline gig at the Festival Hall and Queen demanded he be on the bill. Happy Norman not available either? Not so much. He was still living high on the hog from his time with the Beatles. Because he changed his name. Yeah. So they get into, um, into the waters. Everything's going well. You know your dog's got an overbite? Looks yeah, like I know. Bruce it's Springsteen. funny looking, isn't it? Hysterical. I know, it's cute. Yes. So they get into the... Ah. They get, <laughs> there's that laugh. Ah. So they, you know that laugh? That means that you're thinking of something funny in your head. I'm sorry. You're not listening, and then you just out of... You listen to other podcasts, I'm talking, then you hear... Ah. And I go, what's that? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, I'll tell you about this. So I like it because it means you're happy. You're in a good mood. I'm always happy. Oh, I'm a happy guy. I think on episode five, you're a little get bit Get on with it. So... All right. So 
They yes. off they go. They're off. They're off. Off to see the wizard. <laughs> the wizard of, of fish. They're going yeah. to see the fish. And they, they go past where they should safely go. Is it like a line? Y- yeah. You know, there's, there's, you know, danger. Don't come past Coordinates. Here. Yes. Yeah. Don't go On the map, is there a picture of like a sea monster? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, because that's what some of those old maps look like. Although this was the 80s, but still. 1991, actually. So, but that's not when it happened. That's when the movie was. No. In, oh, no, I saw in, the movie in, with Jenny. O- I wasn't with her till 97, so it must have been. In yeah. October 1991, a yeah, you're dying right. tropical hurricane from Bermuda collided with a cold that, To trunk. create? A perfect storm. How did they that's get what that, that means. Title. That's what it means. Yeah. Perfect. I thought it was something to do with rugby league. All right, go on. So, um, so they're out there and they're catching fish. By the, they're going mental. They're getting hundreds of fish. Where were they putting them? That's right. They, An esky? No, no, because that would have been too small. They have a cooling fridge. <laughs> a cooling fridge to put the fish in. Right? And it's, it's quite adequate. It's big. No worries. They're putting it in there laughing. They're putting ice in there. They go, yeah, we're having a ball. We're going to make a lot of money. So <clears throat> now yes. they say that's enough. We've got enough. Let's go. <laughs> George Clooney Okay, so if we go out more, yes. we can get more. How do you know that? Because that's they're having luck. He says, I've, I've got the luck. I've got the Kevorkian. Yeah, that's exactly what he's got, the Kevorkian. I've got the luck. I feel it. Let's do it. And they're like, oh, we'll make more money. Let's go. They, they're throwing their arms up in there. Yippee! So they go out. <laughs> Guess who they pass on the road, on the water? Fatso McGee. Captain Phillips. Out there in a rowboat. <laughs> Surrounded by Sudanese from Samoa <laughs> who had visited Somali. That's right. They don't say anything. They go past no. them. Go past them. Did they give a look? A wave. A small wave. That's nice. Yeah. Tom Hanks, George Clooney. So what happens was they go past and they get more fish. Okay. They get more fish. Moving on. Yes. And they're wrapped. We got the, the fish. The fish are wrapped. <laughs> no, the fish Already. Aren't. The fish are Having a hard thing to do. <laughs> catching fish wrapped. Mm. That's right. So... They go throw them in the in the uh, esky. No, cool room. Yeah, cool room. That's right, cool room. They're all excited. We got the luck. We're going to make money. We'll go home. Guess what happened? They get audited. <laughs> no, the cool room breaks down. Shut up. Yeah, what a drag. The fish. They're going off. Oh. Oh, they go. We've We're, got to get them to Woolworths and Sunbury. Yeah, they say. This is our chance to make money. Quick. Turn the boat around. Let's go. Let's go. I don't remember. I must have gone by this point. You've gone by this point. Now, back at home around yeah. the bar, because the women sit around the bar and have a drink while Piss they're pots. waiting yes. <laughs> in the ladies' lounge. Yes. <laughs> having a having a having a shandy. Shandy. <laughs> yes. Uh, and they see on the TV mm. the storms coming towards each other. Mm. The perfect storm. Now, the guys out in the boat, I don't know if they're too far away, but they don't know what's going on. So they turn around. They're going back to try and get back so that some of the fish won't spoil. And the perfect storm starts to come and hit. So they've already turned around. Mm. Okay. The perfect storm's coming. They're basically going right into it. Why couldn't they see that on their gadgets? Well, let's, let's, let's look at that from a couple of points of view. One, they could see it. And they think, let's go straight into it as fast as we can and we'll get over it. Because I do remember him doing that. By the way, I haven't watched this movie <laughs> since, since I watched it in 1999. Or they couldn't pick it up, their thing, because when the fridge broke down, so did their thing. So there you go. Take whichever one you want. I'm really... <laughs> So when their so I think fridge I'm... broke down, so did their thing. <laughs> their navigator. Sat nav. Okay. Yeah. Sure. All right. So it's one of those two. Which way are they heading now? They're heading home. Which is? North. North. South. South. West. Okay. <laughs> so they're, if they're traveling the east out into the which ocean. Which way they were going? They were traveling east out into the ocean. Well, then they're going west. Look well, at you. I know. I've been studying maps since I'm our sure. last. What would that be, that study called, Ken? Cardiology. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Is it? 
No. <laughs> it's so close. Cartography. Oh, it's close, wasn't it? Mm. Cardiology is something to do with medicine, isn't it? To a degree, yes. It's the study of the heart. Heart. There you go. All right. So from then this. on, you get yes. the idea. Now, now the rest of the movie, you know, there's not, not much to tell you. They get, they get hit by the storm. What happens? Well, the, the boat gets tossed around like a little tin can. Yeah, uh, it turns upside down. Oh, uh, that's bad. And Clooney and John C. Riley are together saying, oh, well, we gave it our best shot. Guess we just need to die now. Yeah, well, there's nothing else they can do. George C. Riley, John C. Riley, you know, mm, I would have liked to see the boy again. I've got a second callback for Chicago. <laughs> that's right. Maybe I can see him there. Yeah. But no, yeah, it's very sad. He goes, mm. oh, I would have liked to see the boy tell him mm, I love him. Yeah. You know, you see uh, one kid, you see them all though. Well, that's right. And the boat sinks, so it's not a very happy ending. No, but it's an incredible move. You see, you they see they first they have minutes. like a statue or something, don't they? Um, a yeah, monument. I think so. Yeah, I remember seeing some sort of statue. Yeah. The monument of a fisherman. Well, and of his them. friend. Yeah. Because they had a sore throat. <laughs> That's right. That was a good one. That didn't take much to tell no, you about. No, that was quick. Yeah. And uh, I didn't really get much wrong. No. Which is remarkable because the other ones that I have seen, I got wrong. No, not wrong. Well, misplaced. Wrong's harsh. Yeah. Um, no, so that was lovely. And did they get an Academy Award or something for that? No. It, it was really, it made a lot of money. Did it? But it did not uh, receive much. Apparently they shot most of it in a tank. Did they, true? Is yeah. That true? I wouldn't mind doing the movie um, Life of Pi. It's already been cast. What do you want to be in it? I, I, want, to be, uh, I want to be the tiger. What's the tiger's name? Mr. Henderson. Are you sure about that? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Mr. Henderson. Are you certain about that? Oh, I was, but you're doubting me. I'm, I'm doubting you a little bit. Do you want to just check right, that right. on Dr. Google yeah, yeah. before we move on? Right. Life of Pi. And you, are you, do you know, and you know it's not pie as in 7-Eleven with sauce. No, no. Life of Pie Shop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Life of Pie Squared. Um, I don't know if it was Mr. Henderson. But it was certainly about. But there was no, there was no tiger in the actual movie. No, and they shot that in a tank. That's that's what made me think of it. Well, it was only the boy. Everything else was CGI. It's an incredible movie. Have you, you seen it? Well, amazing performance by the boy because yeah. he was working to nobody. Yeah, and he wasn't. He was off the street. That boy. He wasn't an actor. What, what street? Uh, Diane Lane. Bindaloo. <laughs> he was from India. He never had never acted. Really? Yeah. Uh, like well, like Puku. I was just going to say that. He got, he got an Academy Award nomination. Puku. Yeah. In Life of Pi. Here we are. What is the name of the tiger in Life of Pi? Mm. Richard Parker. So close. <laughs> Unbe- you never see him in the same room. Mr. <laughs> Henderson and Richard Parker. <laughs> and how did the tiger finish up on the boat? Let's not do that for this time, but we'll do it for next time. Yeah, that, that's a good movie. I like that. All right, well, that's good. And also, don't forget at home, if you have an idea hmm. of a band or a film you want us to do, hmm. uh, get us on our Facebook page. That's a good idea. Uh, and uh, we'll try our best to, to help you out. That's been a really enjoyable uh, podcast today. In the meantime, keep well, enjoy yourselves, have fun, and um, we'll see you next time. See ya. See ya.